This is the first Dodge Challenger. And this is the very last Dodge Challenger ever because next year, this thing is dead. How did the Challenger go from being an icon of lawless individualism to being one of the most notorious boy cars in all of history? And why, after all these years, is Dodge killing off one of its most popular models ever? Let's get into it. Welcome to Dono. The 1970 Challenger had a bunch of engine options, but this car has the coolest one. This Challenger is powered by the 426 Hemi. It made 425 horsepower and launched the big old horse to zero to 60 in just six seconds. This thing was so powerful, so dominant at the racetrack that NASCAR actually banned it from competition. Chrysler changed a few things like the carburetors and valve timing to make it easier to drive on the street, but it was still a race motor at heart. Like if you bought a regular Chrysler, you got the five-year warranty. If you bought the Hemi, you got 90 days. And with all that power, it's not hard to treat every road like a racetrack. <laughs> oh my god. It does all right. Yeah. The Hemi really ruled on the street. I mean, there was a GTO and the 442, and those were all plenty fast, but the king of the hill was really the Hemi. Because although it was listed at 425, it was really closer to 500. You know, the advertising was so sexy. It's a man's machine. Don't let your wife get behind the Hemi. It was called a man's machine because it had no power steering and no power brakes. Just parking this thing. Oh my God, it was like crazy. You couldn't do it. Now look, boy, I know a race car when I see one got the high roof. Right? It does, yeah. You know why? No. Because Keller was president of Chrysler. He just fell, all mentioned were hats while they drive. In fact, he used to have a thing, and it held your hat up, <laughs> so it looked like you were wearing your hat, but the air was blowing. No, right. <laughs> the original Hemi ran from about 51 to about 58, and that went 331, 364, 372, 392, you know, there's all different variations of it. But all Hemi means is hemispherical combustion chamber, I mean, it's cut like an ice cream scoop, so the gas flows easier through it, rather, you know. They just made a lot more power than a pent roof or any other type of design. But you famously flipped over in the Hemi under glass. What was that? See, that car was built to race. The trouble was with the engine in the back, they couldn't keep the front end on the ground. For that reason, it wasn't going to win a race. So let's just make it a wheel standing car. So they got us to literally stand up on the, on the back bumper and all kinds of stuff. Yeah. Oh, that was a lot of fun. Yeah. And this is only the uh, second action I've had in the 50 years of running this car. It'll it's... look exciting. Meanwhile, we've been working with today's sponsor, Insta360, for a while now. And you know what we love most about them? Their cameras, especially the X3. It helps us capture multiple shots with a single setup. We've got a shot of my tire crawling up some sketchy terrain, and then we cut to me hanging out of the window, reacting to it. Normally my reaction shot would be an extra take, but with the X3 camera, we get it all in one. We just move the shot using Insta360's app. You can stabilize, reframe, and do a bunch of other stuff after the fact which is really nice when you're off-roading. You can just slap the camera anywhere you want with Insta360's invisible selfie stick. That's what I'm mounting right now. So you can just enjoy the ride and worry about editing or framing later. If you're interested in snagging one of these cameras, just click the link below. The X3 cameras have never been on sale, but right now they're 10% off until December 3rd. So take advantage of Insta360 sale and get an X3 camera for 10% off by clicking that link below. The Challenger made Dodge one of the coolest car makers of the 70s, and Dodge would borrow heavily from this car when they reintroduced the Challenger in the 2000s. And the speed, danger, and lawlessness of these vehicles would also carry over into the 21st century. Naturally, Hollywood gravitated to the Challenger for movies like Vanishing Point, Death Proof, and Gone in 60 Seconds when it came to casting a good getaway car for misfits and bandits who evade the police in. And that reputation is still seen today as the car has become synonymous with hooligans you see at every local street takeover. But it's actually not this lawless reputation that will eventually kill the Challenger line. We'll get to that in a bit. Oh man, 
those brakes are no joke. When I was a kid and in high school, muscle cars were the only thing I cared about. Right. This was one of my favorite ones, right. this and the Cuda. I'm just so happy that it, it lives up to my expectations. Oh yeah, that's a big car. <laughs> <laughs> the changing lanes in this is like, you feel it. Sure. Well, you know, it's funny because 50 feels like 80. A modern car, 100 feels like 50. You gotta pay attention when you drive it. You do. That's kind of the thing with these classics. Yeah, don't ride the clutch so much. I, yeah, I'm sorry. I, I think I was in third, not first. Being a big Mopar guy with this car kind of being the top of my fantasy dream list, like, this reaffirms everything. That makes me very happy. Dreams validated. Dreams validated. <laughs> oh, that's just so good. The nice thing is, if you like to drive these cars, you can recreate it. You can buy a Challenger, take out the engines in it, and buy all the pieces to make it a Hemi car. It won't be a factory Hemi car, but it'll drive like one, it'll handle like one, you know. This was one of the first cars I ever remember liking. When I was a kid, there's a Cadillac dealership in Louisville, Kentucky with a museum upstairs. Yeah. And it also has like a cafe. And my dad took me to get lunch one day. And I remember being like, what is this? Because all it did was go fast in a straight line. But that's all it took to impress kids in the 60s. Yeah. I love mine. It just puts you in a whole different mindset compared to other cars we've ever driven. That guy's getting a picture. Yeah. <laughs> Although it didn't dominate the American market, there was a particular area in which the Challenger would reign supreme, the Detroit street racing scene. The street was Woodward Avenue, an eight lane road that stretched for 24 miles alongside some of Detroit's most popular hangout spots. Its proximity to the Big Three's manufacturing facilities made this area a perfect breeding ground for testing out experimental setups for these new American muscle cars. The avenue became known as the American Automotive Testing Society, as crowds would gather to watch pony cars peel out head to head as the traffic lights turned green. The racing was as good as you would find at the drag strip. But there was one car in particular that became known for being unbeatable. A mysterious 1970 black Challenger kitted out with tons of options like hood pins, a 426 Hemi, and a sick, fake gator skin roof. The elusive black Challenger would prowl Detroit street racing spots like a ghoulish beast. The car would show up, win every race, then disappear for months on end like a ghost. For years, no one knew the racer's identity. His winning record and mystery cemented the car as a true legend in Dodge history. We now know the owner of the Black Ghost was one Godfrey Qualls. And when you know a little more about the man, the Black Ghost's secretive nature starts to make sense. Because Godfrey Qualls was actually a cop. Godfrey's kids never even knew their dad was an urban legend until he passed away in 2015. Godfrey left the car to his son Gregory, who started hearing from family friends about his dad's secret late night racing escapades. With some help, Gregory was able to get the old race car driving again and started making appearances at car shows starting in 2017. By 2020, the Black Ghost was inducted into the National Historic Vehicle Register, which led Dodge to build a tribute of their own. This is the 2023 Dodge Challenger Black Ghost Edition. Like Godfrey's car, it has hood pins, it's got a white stripe on the back, and it has an alligator skin roof. But unlike Godfrey's car, this thing has something a little different under the hood. It's got a 6.2 liter Hellcat Hemi V8, which makes a pavement wrinkling 807 horsepower. <laughs> so fast. <laughs> uh, I mean, how could you not love this thing? Besides all of its glaringly impractical <laughs> features. This engine has a bigger supercharger making more boost than previous Hellcats. Yeah, you know, it's actually pretty astonishing to think that this car is 100 more horsepower than the first Hellcats did back in 2015. So 
the new Black Ghost has real drag racing chops like its inspiration. But it's also a fully loaded Challenger, which means it has enormous and very comfortable seats, a big ol' infotainment system with a, quote, carbon fiber bezel, and a suede headliner. It's kinda like driving your rich childhood friend's TV room. What does it feel like to drive one of these things? I mean, it feels enormous. It's got a ton of horsepower. So the turning radius is huge. If I could put it in a word how it feels to drive, it's excessive. Oh, for sure. You know, this car is a status symbol. I mean, that's a testament to how good this car was. And name a car that Dodge made, besides the Viper, that was a status symbol. <laughs> It's fast. It's so good. The Challenger was one of our first ever press cars. Dodge gave us some really cool cars to drive down. We had the Demon, we had a Red Eye, we had a, a Charger Hellcat as well. But that's kind of the problem, James. It's 2023. <laughs> yeah. Not much is changing here. Yeah, more and more I'm having people uh, that come up to me say like, hey man, I used to watch you every day when I was a kid. I'm yes. like, oh my God. Yeah. We drove this pretty much exact yeah. same car back then. But my least favorite thing about the Black Ghost by far is the price tag of $103,000. The Black Ghost is a limited edition car with a planned production of just 300 units. It's part of Dodge's Last Call series of special edition challengers. Last Call as in, we're not gonna make any more after this. As in, the Dodge Challenger is over. And with it, the Hemi V8. Dodge's parent company, Stellantis, recently announced its commitment to electrification, and by proxy, the discontinuation of V8 engines in their production cars. This move is a response to tightening emissions regulations around the world, but it's a big deal for Dodge specifically. Retiring this car is the end of a huge moment for Dodge, but not only for Dodge, for American cars and cars in general. This is a huge part of the last hurrah of internal combustion engines. When Dodge decides to get rid of explosion engines, I mean, that's it. Before the new Challenger and its sister, the Charger, Dodge was a punchline. They were stuck in the shadow of Ford and Chevy just like they were back in the day. Before the current V8 heyday of Dodge, Dodge cars were literally a punchline in an SNL sketch. Yeah. There's a sketch with Will Ferrell, and Will Ferrell's like this dad, and the whole family hates him, and he goes, <laughs> I drive a Dodge Stratus! <laughs> And that's what Dodge was before these cars. It was a lame, middle management, thankless dad car. But when the new Challenger hit the market in 2008, there was a cultural shift. Dodge was bold again. They were in your face again. And thanks to product placement in movies like Fast and the Furious and rappers like Wiz Khalifa, 21 Savage, and Offset buying their own, the Challenger became one of the default cool cars in the public's eye. It is a wild, outlaw, takeover, boy car. I really have to respect Dodge for leaning into that. Dodge is like, yeah, go to your job during the day, but when you get off, come to Fight Club. Yeah. And here's the thing, rule number one of Fight Club, you can talk about Fight Club. The new Challengers got so popular, so ubiquitous, and so infamous, that I bet a lot of you watching this don't even like them. In a way, the new Challenger is kind of like the Drake of cars, right? He's a great musician, but when someone tells you that he's their favorite, you're kind of like, okay. But like Drake, you can't deny the greatness of the Challenger. It's a big coupe you could get with some big ol' engines. It represents the peak of internal combustion powered excess. And some of those Challengers were pretty affordable. With their muscle car, Dodge put horsepower into the hands of the populace. I don't think it's a stretch to say that the Challenger is the people's car of modern America. But without the V8, where does Dodge go from here? Just because the V8 is going away doesn't mean Stellantis is stepping away from internal combustion completely. Chrysler has already begun installing the corporation's latest gas burner into some of their vehicles. The Hurricane is a three liter twin turbocharged inline six engine capable of 510 horsepower from the factory. Just imagine how much that number will grow with a tune, given the EPA doesn't get to your tuner first. In a time where everyone is nervously waiting around for the next big thing to reveal itself, solace can be found in the past. The Challenger has been through all this before. The 1970 Challenger was the best selling of the first generation. In fact, it's still the best selling Challenger by model year. But from 71 to 74, first gen sales fell off a cliff. The first Challenger was facing emission regulations of its own, as well as far more efficient foreign competition. So it had to go away. 
But if the new black ghost can tell us anything, it's that there's a chance the Challenger will come back in a more powerful form than we can ever imagine today. Dodge is cool again because of this car. I think it's great and I'm sad to see it go. It's gonna be really interesting to see what Dodge does in the next 10 years to keep that legacy going. What a huge success this car has been. Y'all drive careful now, here. Yeah? It is that time of year again. Time to get prepared for our annual Black Friday sale starting Wednesday. Not only can you shop our biggest discounts of the year, but we are dropping a bunch of all new unreleased items, including new enamel pins and new colorway hats and t-shirts. We're also restocking a bunch of your favorite designs. So set your alarm for Wednesday morning because some quantities are limited and they are gonna go fast. Thank you so much for watching, and thank you, Jay. Gentlemen, gentlemen, yeah, yeah I'll, I'll get a new clutch, don't worry. <laughs> Help us pay for a new clutch by hitting that like button, hit that subscribe button. Uh, if you want to see more us videos. talk about more old stuff, uh, Nolan and I host a podcast called Pass Gas, available wherever podcasts are available, or you can watch full-length videos of it uh, at this link right here. We'll see you next time. The X3 cameras have never been on sale, but right now, they're 10% off until December 3rd. So take advantage of Insta360 sale and get an X3 camera for 10% off by clicking that link below.